Okay, so lab number 20. This is going to be getting sound to work and a little bit getting used to uh, our environment and being able to add lost machines. So, I have all of my VMs started, my domain controller, vCenter, and two ESXi hosts. I'm on my VC. Again, make sure our SANs are there, or our iSCSI LUNs are there. I'm going to go ahead and maximize my screen. So, we'll go ahead and log into vCenter. So, first thing we're going to end up doing is we're going to allow sound for our XP Pro A machine that we created in our last lab. So, I'm going to go to the home page. We're going to go ahead and open up VMs and templates. We're going to be loading our XP Pro A machine. So while that's good and loading, I want to make sure that it's all named XP Pro A. So I'm going to go to its storage. I just want to browse where we saved it. And you notice XP Pro A and all the files are called XP Pro A. So it is our correct virtual machine. I just wanted to make sure that it all shows it. I'm going to go back to our VMs. Since our XP is loading, I'm going to go ahead and open up our console to it. It's a, a lot of people, if they don't do the templates correctly, the naming starts getting off. So they don't know which virtual machine they're working with. So it's important to, to make sure that we're working with the correct virtual machine. Now while that goes ahead and loads, So, uh, our lab says make sure our RDP is enabled for our XP. So, you should be able to right click on computer. It's a nested virtual environment, so again, be patient with it. Let's click on remote, and let's allow remote connections. Go and select our remote users. User is the current user that we have. So that's okay. Notice that our machine is still called XP Pro C. That was because of our nested virtual environment not liking the computer name. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to A. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a restart. The customization does work, and the customization should have changed the name. It was just within our nested environment. It doesn't always change the name, and that has been a problem with the nested virtual environment. So let's go ahead and make sure that our audio is working. Go to Control Panel. If you don't get this view, you can always switch to the category view. We want to open up sound. Notice that no audio device is detected. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to see if we can remote into it and play audio. So how we're going to do that is let's go ahead and look at our network settings. and record our IP address. Our IP address is 192.168.246.143. That is the IP address of this virtual machine. So I'm going to go back to my vCenter server, and I'm going to go ahead and open up our remote desktop. And I'm going to go ahead and try to remote directly to this computer. You may get a uh, unable to identify the remote connection. That's okay. Here is our remote connection. Here is our console connection.
it will prompt us for our username. Oh, you know what? That's because we did not set a password for our user. Let's go ahead and set, make sure to set a password for our user. That way we can actually remote desktop. Let's try that again. Remote desktop requires the user to have a password. If we did not set a password, we don't get the option to do remote desktop. Remote desktop will not allow a blank password. So do keep that in mind. Which that probably means I should go back and change the template, but that's okay. You will see that our console will be blacked out and it should load on our remote desktop screen. That's because with any client operating systems, there can only be one session active. So the remote desktop took the session. So let's go ahead and let's see if there is audio through our remote desktop. Again, with the nested virtual machines, they may be kind of slow, so again, be patient. I want to go back to control panel. I want to go back to sound and audio. And you'll notice that our virtual machine does have audio. It actually should play the audio. It's just I've noticed that the audio quite does not work very well inside our nested VMs. But it does allow us to, it does detect it, and it should actually play it. And that's the audio portion. So I'm going to go ahead and back out of this. I'm going to exit out of our RDP session. I'm going to go ahead and power off our XPA machine. So the question then becomes, what about when it connects to different data stores? We see it. But what happens if we accidentally delete it? I'm going to wait for it to power off. And I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, I haven't quite powered off yet. There it goes. I'm going to delete it from inventory. Do not delete from disk, but just remove from inventory. So it's not there. So where is it? It's not uh, listed anymore. So what we're going to do is we're going to browse our data stores. We saved it to iSCSI 2, so we're going to browse iSCSI 2. It is still there. It's just not associated with any of our hosts. So what we do is you can find the VMX file. That's our virtual machine config file. Add inventory. That's where you'd name it. You stick it on a host. And that way it will associate with that host. Let's go back home. Let's go back to VM. And there it is. It's just, I've noticed if we take VMs and we start moving them around from different storage LUNs, they get removed from inventory. So it's always a good idea to make sure that we can re-add them to inventory. 
Uh, last thing is, what happens if we want to log this guy or we want to check this guy's BIOS for whatever reason? If we right click on it and we go power, you'll notice there is no boot to BIOS. What about the guest? Same thing, there is no boot to BIOS. So how exactly can we get to our BIOS? How we do this is, we're going to go ahead and right click on it, edit virtual machine settings, and we're going to click on our options tab, because we do have the option to tell it to do boot to BIOS. So you'll, if you look down the list, you'll notice there's a boot option and it says normal boot, so we're going to select this guy. We can tell it next time to boot, force entry into BIOS. Not sure why we would want to actually double check our BIOS in a virtual machine environment, but we can. Alright, let's go and look at our console, and it should kick us right into the BIOS. This is only one way to do this. So do keep that in mind. And here's our BIOS. And that's actually it for Lab 21. Thank you guys.